Saudi Arabia is embarking on an ambitious project, the construction of the world's largest artificial river, surpassing the huge Nile itself. This audacious project aims to reshape not only the physical terrain, but it also considers the socio-economic and environmental landscape of the region. But what exactly is this mega-project? And what technology did they use to achieve such a bold vision? Stick around to find out. Saudi Arabia is embarking on an immense vision. They are currently creating an artificial river that surpasses the Nile, in both ambition and scale, stretching over 12,000 kilometers across its humid deserts. This monumental project goes beyond simply creating the world's longest underground canal. It represents a pioneering effort to convert barren sands into fertile lands using advanced desalination technology. The project is huge and comes with a big budget, showing how serious Saudi Arabia is about dealing with its water shortage by turning seawater into freshwater. This artificial river could completely change farming and sustainability in one of the driest places on the planet. Saudi Arabia wants to make sure it has enough water and food by watering large parts of the desert. At the same time, they want to lead the world in finding new ways to protect the environment. As we've mentioned before, this groundbreaking project involves constructing the largest man-made river in the world, a venture that is both ambitious in its size and revolutionary in its approach. Spanning over 12,000 kilometers and built underground, it is a unique endeavor on such a large scale. Using advanced desalination technology, the project aims to produce around 9.4 million cubic meters of water every day by taking water from the Red Sea and turning salty water into fresh drinking water. Engineered to minimize water loss through evaporation, the artificial river will travel underground, ensuring a steady flow to different parts of the country, including its driest regions. This marks a significant step towards achieving self-sufficiency in agriculture in an area where this goal has seemed impossible before. By introducing a reliable and sustainable water source, Saudi Arabia hopes to grow vegetation in its barren areas, reducing reliance on imported food and diversifying its economy away from oil. With a width of 11 meters and a depth of 4 meters, this artificial waterway is set to surpass the scale of the famous Nile River. The project will use specialized anti-corrosion pipes measuring 2.25 meters in diameter to transport fresh water across long distances. This network of pipes, twice as long as the Nile River, highlights the ambitious nature of the project. This engineering accomplishment isn't just about creating a new water source. It's about completely transforming water supply infrastructure on an unprecedented scale. If all the pipes from the project were laid end to end, they could circle the globe multiple times. So, it's a pretty big project, as if we haven't stressed that enough. But what is this technology that they're using to achieve such an incredible feat? Well, we've mentioned it before. Desalination. Basically, desalination is the process of removing salt and other impurities from seawater or brackish water. Desalination plays a crucial role in Saudi Arabia's artificial river, a monumental endeavor aimed at transforming barren deserts into fertile lands. The project, spanning over 12,000 kilometers and utilizing advanced desalination technology, marks a groundbreaking shift in water resource management in one of the driest regions on the planet. The artificial river draws its source from the Red Sea, converting saline water into fresh potable water through state-of-the-art desalination techniques. By navigating underground to minimize evaporation losses and engineered to ensure a steady flow across the country, including arid regions, it aims to revolutionize agriculture and sustainability in Saudi Arabia. Desalination, employing both membrane and thermal techniques, is at the heart of this project's efficiency. Membrane desalination involves pushing seawater through filters or membranes, allowing water molecules to pass through while trapping salts and impurities. Thermal desalination, on the other hand, heats seawater to evaporate it leaving behind salt and minerals, with the vapor condensed into pure water. The Saline Water Conversion Corporation, or the SWCC, is state-owned, 
and it oversees desalinated water production in Saudi Arabia, ensuring a steady supply to meet domestic needs and industrial demands. With annual desalinated water production exceeding 1.6 billion cubic meters, Saudi Arabia accounts for a significant portion of the world's output, underscoring the vital role desalination plays in sustaining life and economic activities in the country. Over the past few decades, Saudi Arabia's approach to water has undergone significant changes. Initially, the country relied on its local renewable water sources, mainly for small-scale farming and daily water needs. However, this began to shift as the kingdom turned to two primary sources, desalinated water from the sea and ancient groundwater known as fossil groundwater. This shift was substantial because it allowed Saudi Arabia to use water similarly to countries with abundant rain and rivers, supporting large-scale agriculture and supplying water for various purposes. Initially, water in Saudi Arabia was generously provided and inexpensive for its people, leading to a significant increase in water usage, especially for farming, from 1980 to 1994. However, much of this water came from underground reserves that couldn't be replenished. By 1995, the government had depleted much of this precious water over a long period. Until 1994, people in Saudi Arabia didn't have to pay for the water they used at home. It was entirely free. But then, the government began charging a small fee for water use in the early 2000s. Recognizing the challenges of using excessive water, the government shifted its approach in 2000. They began reducing financial support for water costs and encouraged farmers to use water more efficiently. This included implementing tools like drip irrigation and soil moisture sensors, which helped reduce water usage in agriculture. As a result, wheat farming, which consumed a lot of water, declined, eventually halting altogether by 2016. Despite historically relying on oil and desalination plants for water needs, Saudi Arabia now recognizes the long-term instability of these solutions. As a result, the country is poised to embark on a project that could redefine agriculture and water resource management in arid zones. Although the project has great prospects, the construction and operation of the artificial water canal also pose significant environmental risks. Habitat destruction is a primary concern, as the canal's construction may entail clearing vegetation and altering natural landscapes, potentially disrupting sensitive ecosystems and wildlife habitats. Furthermore, the canal's water quality could be a source of environmental concern. Depending on the source of the water and the treatment processes involved, there may be risks of pollution from agricultural runoff or industrial discharge, which could adversely affect water quality and ecosystem health. The project's reliance on desalination for freshwater production also raises energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Desalination requires significant energy input, contributing to carbon emissions and other environmental impacts associated with energy production. Moreover, if the canal draws water from the Red Sea, there may be implications for marine ecosystems, including changes in salinity levels and disturbances to marine life. The longest artificial water canal in Saudi Arabia has the capacity to tackle water scarcity, bolster economic growth, and advance environmental sustainability. However, it's important to meticulously assess and mitigate the environmental repercussions of the project. Well, that's about it for today's video. Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.